Can you fill a 2D space with an infinitely thin and infinitely long line such that each coordinate on that line maps to a unique coordinate in the 2D space? Now you might be thinking, surely we could just draw a line from left to right and then right to left and then back again and then just keep repeating it until we get to the end. And as the number of turns approach infinity, you would get what we want, right? But that wouldn't actually work because if you pick a point on the line, let's say a third of the way through, then it would start out here, but as we add more and more turns, it would go here, then here, and it would never actually converge to a single point. As the number of turns approaches infinity, the point does converge to around one third of the way through the 2D shape, but it doesn't converge in the other dimension. You basically just get a line with some thickness, where a half converges to a half, and a third to a third, and so on. It doesn't really add anything new. So maybe there's no answer. Maybe because a line has zero thickness, it just can't fill a 2D space. Well, it turns out that you're actually a complete spanner. To understand why, you need to understand Hilbert curves, and to do that, we're going to cover the seven levels of dimensions. Level 1. Supine protoplasmic invertebrate jelly. At this stage, you think of dimensions as simply just directions. Left, right, up, down, forward, or backwards. This is what everybody knows anyway, so if you're on this level, I'm not impressed. Fun fact, supine protoplasmic invertebrate jellies is actually a scientific way to describe a slug laying on its back. Level 2. Mildly educated. You realise that dimensions aren't just directions, but independent parameters or degrees of freedom. So a line has one degree, a plane two, and space three. On this level, you learn how time makes up the fourth dimension, or more accurately, space-time, and this makes up the four classical dimensions. When you see a video of a moving tesseract, you're actually just seeing the tesseract at different angles in different times, using time as a sort of pseudo-dimension to help us visualize 4D. Level three, complete surface level understanding. You appreciate that any variable, be it temperature, color intensity, probability, can be its own access in abstract space. Modern string theory suggests that there are 11 dimensions that we actually live in, but the other seven are compactified and not really observable in everyday life. You also begin to work with 3D vector space and maybe a bit of linear algebra so you can rotate and skew points in 2D or 3D. You can stop here and live a perfectly happy and healthy life. Or you can move to level four, higher dimensional understanding. Screw that, you're now working with data sets in 10, 20, or even 100 dimensions. You know that the human mind can't actually visualize them, but mathematically, they're just vectors in the set of real numbers to the power n. You understand how algorithms can project higher dimensions like 4D down into 3D or even 2D. Level five, fractional and fractal dimensions. You've discovered that dimension doesn't even have to be an integer. In fact, fractals like the Koch snowflake or the Hausdorff dimension have fractional dimensions. And shapes can demand more than one coordinate, but less than two. This is because the fractal dimension of something can be measured by how much does the detail increase by when you zoom in. Level six, infinite and functional dimensions. Here you enter the realm of function spaces, like Hilbert spaces, for example, where each point is a function itself. Start with a single line segment, this is order one, that visits the centers of the four quadrants in a U shape. To get order n plus one, replace each segment of order n curve with a scaled rotated copy of that same U shape. If you repeat for h sub n as n tends to infinity, you get a Hilbert curve, which covers every point in this 2D plane. Why does this cover every point and just snaking through the plane doesn't? Well, if you pick any point on the 1D line which makes up that curve, that point is guaranteed to converge to one point in the plane, meaning for every point in the 2D plane with two coordinates, you can reduce it down to a single point on the real number line. The length of this curve is infinite, but the area is still zero. This is called a space filling curve. But a Hilbert space is something completely different. Level seven, the cutting edge of dimensional theory. You can manipulate moduli spaces, character variables, and exotic manifolds. Like how your dad manipulated your mum when he told her that he was only going to get a pint of milk. You either prove results about smooth structures on four manifolds, or you classify infinite dimensional symmetry groups in quantum field theory. For you, dimension can either be algebraic, cohomological, spectral, or categorical, and to you, applying mathematics in real life is like applying honey to a pile of poo. Even the thought of it sends shivers down your spine, which is probably why your armpits smell like a festering bouquet of anaerobic disappointment. If you enjoyed that video, then I do have one small ask from you. I'm saving up for a new recording studio so I can make these videos look and sound professional. So if you would like to help out improve these videos production quality, then please just donate even just a dollar or two to help pay for the expensive lens. And if you donate just $10 or more, then I'll put your name in the description of every single video for the next year. Your generosity keeps these videos free for everyone. So thank you for watching and piss off.
Unless if you donate, then I love you. Bye.